Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to lesson number six of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look on how to include some specific CSS and JavaScript inside our administration panel. If you remember in the previous lesson, we left our admin section in the status with a bunch of custom fields. And I told you that I was going to implement a system to upload a custom image because that's what we wanna create. We wanna recreate this section, this top section of the sidebar in our custom theme. We're gonna do that, absolutely. I'm not forgetting, I'm not skipping that part. But in order to do this, in order to upload an image and especially to use the built-in media uploader of WordPress, we need before to include some specific JavaScript and CSS only in our custom section. So let's take a look on how to do that. As usual, let's access our uh, code editor. And first, I wanna add another field that I forgot. Here we have an amazing description for our website and name or whatever, and I didn't put it inside. So let's solve this issue by usually doing the same, duplicating a register setting and changing here with user description. And here we're gonna duplicate this full name part. Underneath here, let's call it description. Description. I get senses. Senses about option is always the same. So instead of Let's copy this function. Let's put it underneath the name because it's the location that we have. Let's copy the same function name. This is pretty boring and absolutely you don't need it, but user description and is this one user description. Let's change the variable into description. Copy the variable, pass the variable. User description is also the name, placeholder description and maybe we can put also the paragraph or something right something smart save it let's access our administration panel let's refresh it and we have this that overrode our Sunset sidebar description, sunset sidebar description, description. Oops, we use the same ID. There you go. Write something smart. I don't remember what I want, but I really like this thing. So I'm gonna copy this part and I'm gonna paste it in here, save. Pretending to be serious is 1985. Okay, now we're good to go. Now we have pretty much all the fields that we have in our front end. Now what we have to do finally, it's include some custom CSS and custom JavaScript to, in order to use some specific advanced functionalities of WordPress. So first of all, I don't wanna use this file anymore. I don't wanna use the function dash admin.php because I want to reserve this file only for the functions that I want to use in the admin section. And what I need to do is an enqueue of a style. I have to load the style. So I want to create another file to keep all my enqueues in this single file. So if I need to track it and edit it in the future, I know that all my enqueues are still there. So in the ink folder that we previously created, let's create a new file called q.php. And remembering our functions.php, we have to include and we have to actually require this file. So let's duplicate the line in q. So we're gonna be sure that this file is gonna be included in probably in the functions.php or WordPress. And now we can open the file 
and write whatever we want inside. So I'm gonna copy the first part because I wanna maintain always my functions file consistent and I wanna use the same format and the same um, comments to split sections. So let's use admin in queue functions here. And let's start writing our first NQ for our admin section. So as usual, we have to create a specific function to store our register style and NQ style. So let's do function sunset underscore load underscore admin underscore scripts. Let's call it this one. As usual, every time you create a function, let's put the appendix of the name of your theme or a specific unique package name to avoid to duplicate an already existing function of WordPress or another plugin. So let's try to always create a unique name for this function. And inside here, we have to use the code that if you follow the WordPress 101 series for beginner developers, you already know what we have to do. We have to use the WP register style and the WP inQ style to apply register a custom CSS style and use it in the future. So let's start with simply WP underscore register underscore style. And inside here, we have our string handler that is going to be sun, uh, 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 sunset admin. Here we have the location of our file, and in my case, going to be get template directory URI. This script, if you don't already know, it's going to point to the actual uh, directory where our theme, our template is. So at this point, we have to connect this function with a dot, the PHP equivalent to merge to strings, with um, the URL of where our style is. So in my case, it's a CSS dash sunset admin dot CSS. So this is a format that I like to use. Basically, if I have to include a CSS style for a specific theme, my theme is called sunset, I'm going to use sunset.css as a CSS style or sunset.js as a JavaScript file. But if I have to include another custom style, inside the administration section or inside a specific section, I really like to create the file name in this way with a dot to separate the actual section where I'm going to use. So it's going to be really easy to understand if this file belongs to the front end or to the back end because we're going to have sunset.admin.css so we're going to have sunset.admin.js so we can easily distinguish which file is going where but it's just applying an appendix uh, before the extension of the file and no worries about using the dot of course if you want you can use a dash or an underscore it doesn't really matter you can use the dot as far as the last dot it's always the extension the real extension of the file having a dot in your file name especially for CSS or PHP or JavaScript file is not gonna make any difference it's not gonna trigger any error so we're pretty good to do that. We have uh, empty array because we don't have any dependencies. Uh, we want to specify the version that is our version 1.0.0 if we want and because it's for all the derivation, it's for desktop, mobile, tablet, we can put CSS all. So now we uh, register a specific file that we actually have to create in order to avoid to trigger an error. So inside our CSS folder, let's create a new file called sunset.admin.css. Let's open this file and let's write something super simple. Let's use the same format. So package sunset theme. And here, let's write something pretty silly. So for example, body, background, color. Let's put a bright red just to check 
than if the inclusion of this file is actually working in our administration panel. So let's go back in our inq file. And in here, we can write a WP in queue style. So WP in queue style. And we have to just specify the name of the uh, file that we created. So we registered before. So let's remove all these pre made values. And let's do the sunset. So um, if you didn't follow the previous uh, series of tutorial for beginners, uh, that could be confusing for you, but it's, it's really not confusing. With, these, um, with this function, we are registering a new file, a new CSS file, and we are storing this new CSS file with this unique ID. So we can refer that CSS file with this ID and include that file, whatever we want. This in queue style is the actual function that is including, that is uh, triggering this sunset admin and is printing this file inside our uh, WordPress installation. So usually in a front end, you have these two inside an admin initialization uh, action. You have to create a specific action to trigger this function at a specific point in your generation, in the generation of your WordPress theme. But in our case, we have to create a specific unique action that we want to trigger only if the user is inside the administration panel. We don't want to print this file in our front end. To do that, we have to use another hook of WordPress really handy called admin underscore in queue in queue underscore scripts. So we are saying to WordPress that you have to do this in this moment. You have to enqueue this part inside the admin and not inside the front end. And of course, the second attribute of the add action function is the name of our function passed as a string and semicolon at the end. Let's save it. Let's go back in our administration panel. Let's reload it. And we have a call to an undefining function array. That of course is a misspell. I didn't spell array. Sorry guys. I'm going too fast maybe. Let's refresh again and let's see. We're not noticing anything here, but if we access the page source, the source code on our page and we search for sunset dot admin dot CSS, you will notice we have it here. Our file is properly included with all the settings that we specify. So we have our actual uh, URL, the location, and we have media all that we specify in media all. So to check if it's actually doing something, we have to check what kind of classes and what kind of style this page has to uh, create maybe a custom style for us. So usually is the WP body or is the WP content. Let's check which one. So let's select, for example, the WP body ID that it's pretty much standard in all the pages. And let's access our CSS file and let's do this brutal CSS applying that we're not gonna actually use it in the future, but it's just to see right now. So let's create a border, uh, two pixels solid of red color around the WP body. Let's refresh. And now we have this red border around the WP body. So we're noticing that this file, we have a, a immediate glimpse that this file is properly included in our administration panel. We have a problem though, because if we go in a settings, we're gonna have this border. If we go into tools, we're gonna have this border. If we go in pages and posts, if we go everywhere, we're gonna have this style applied. And we don't really want that. We want that custom style that we just created to be applied only to our sunset section, because we, it, this is the section that we need to use our CSS style. And I, we don't want to mess around with the CSS style of WordPress in other section. We don't want to destroy the experience of the section. In order to uh, limit the usage of this uh, custom style to just one page, we have to use, as usual, a pre-built uh, condition of WordPress to check which page we are in our administration panel. 
In order to do that, we have to extend our function here by including a prebuilt variable of WordPress. So this variable can be named however you want, but in my case, I want to call it by the default dollar hook. So we don't have to pass this variable actually because this admin and queue scripts is automatically passing this variable inside the sunset load admin script, our custom uh, function. So automatically this function is having by default, default this variable. To access this variable, we have to just write a variable inside the brackets of our function. So now we can use this variable to detect which page, in which specific page, our user is navigating right now, or we are right now. Just as a test, let's echo this hook variable and check what's inside this hook variable. So let's refresh and let's access our source code and we have this top level page allocate sunset. If we change page, we're gonna have another variable here that is at the sunset page allocate sunset CSS. So as you can see, this hook that we're calling with a function, it's changing, it depend on which page we are. So we have here the index.php. If we go in the media, the hook is upload.php. So every single page has a specific hook, a unique hook that we can use. For example, the settings has options general.php. So we're pretty safe to uh, use whatever information is stored inside this variable to hook our CSS only on those specific sections. So we know that my general sunset page is top level page allocate. So we can use a simple condition in PHP by writing if this, that is the name of the page that I want to access, that I want to actually include, is different from the hook, we are going to stop the execution of the script and we're going to pass a return variable. So this is a pretty standard function in PHP, it's like nothing complicated, but if you don't know what that means, I'm going to explain you like right in few seconds. Basically, I'm checking if the hook variable is different, the exclamation mark and the equal, it means is not. This means is equal to and this means is not equal to. So if the this hook is not equal to this variable, this string, the top level page allocat sunset, that is the custom page that I created, we're gonna trigger this part of the function, this part here, and we are putting a return. So an empty return basically blocks the execution of the script. So if we put an empty return here, PHP is not gonna go down and execute these last part of the function. So let's go back in our administration panel, let's refresh. As you can see here, we still have the uh, style, the custom style with a border, but if we access another page, you will notice we don't have any more the border, and if we access the source page and we search for the sunset.admin, uh, admin.css, you will notice here it doesn't exist anymore. We, we cannot find any page because it's not included because this page is not equal to the page that I told the system to check. Even if we change to the custom CSS page, we don't have it anymore. So this system, the hook system of the admin and queue scripts is really powerful because we can detect every single page of every administration section of WordPress and include custom CSS for those specific sections. So let's keep going, let's remove this silly statement because we don't need it anymore. We know that the system is working and now we can keep going by uh, creating something kind of nice and we can include uh, a little bit of style to have a small preview of what we want in our administration section. So really quickly, let's access our uh, template file where we are generating 
the uh, settings page of our sunset theme. So this sunset option here, let's refresh. I want to remove this horrible red border. So we have this page now. What I want to do, I want to basically create this part, this top part here with a picture, information, all the icons in this specific area of my administration panel. Maybe here before the menu or here on a side of the menu to give the user a preview of what they're gonna have in the front end. So that would be nice, right? Um, that it's kind of nice that it's it it's giving like a more value to our custom theme. So let's quickly create this section. Inside here, before the forms, I wanna create a custom section called div class sunset sidebar preview. And inside here we can style a little bit div class sunset sidebar. I'm using totally like random uh, HTML. I'm not following anything. I'm like creating randomly what I want to do. So let's check the design file. I have the name, the description, and then the icons. And we have a little bit of padding. So we could use the sunset sidebar to manage and handle this section like the background color and maybe the border and we can use some specific maybe h1 h2 tags and then some custom icons that we already created just really quickly so let's go h1 class user let's use sunset username H2 class sunset description. And then here we can use the class icons wrapper. And let's leave it for that right now. So here I want to include the custom options that I created in the functions dot admin.php. So basically I want to print whatever information I'm inputting in this field inside my preview, inside my bucket of preview. And to do that I have to use the exact same functions that I used in the function admin to retrieve those specific uh, variable, those specific unique settings that are registered in my custom settings. So here as you can see, I have this first name, last name variable, first name, last name variable. So I cannot use this variable because are inside these specific functions and are used just inside this thing. I have to recall these uh, options here to use this variable outside those specific functions here. And let's recall first name, last name, and let's go dollar name it's equal to first name plus space let's leave a blank space and then dollar last name semicolon and here we can print HP print dollar full name Save it. Let's go take a look here, refresh it. And as you can see here, we have our title H1 Alex Dude inside whatever thing we did in style. So it's pretty gross to, <laughs> to see, but let's not uh, care about right now. I need a description now. So let's copy the description part. Let's go back in our template. Uh, let's copy description. I don't have to do anything else. So let's open here. Let's print out our description and let's go take a look here let's refresh and we have title and subtitle now because we included a custom CSS file we can style this section to reflect the style that we want for our actual bar in the front end but in the back end and uh, this is gonna be awesome so first of all let's apply a custom class to the form so I can style a little bit also the form let's call class sunset general form 
and let's copy this so sunset general so and sunset sidebar so let's open css and let's go sunset boom comma sunset preview so sidebar. I'm gonna margin right oops margin right of 20 pixel just to create a little bit something better and there you go we have the preview of what's gonna be or what's gonna look like whatever settings we have and of course if we change this with different value automatically this value whatever thing we put inside is going to be reflected automatically inside here and in a more advanced section in more advanced lesson probably we're gonna activate a sort of editing in line of our style because actually it's really easy to convert this form into this look and give the user the ability to edit directly whatever value they want to edit in here inside the preview of your theme so it's pretty much it for this lesson we uh, learned how to properly include the css a custom css inside a specific section of the administration area we learn how to create a custom section in the template that we're using for that area and we learn how to retrieve a bunch of variables to use in a custom section that is not automatically uh, generated and handled by WordPress. Of course, this function, you can extend them, you can use this get option also in the front end. So we pretty much already know how to print our custom variable in the front end. In the next lesson, finally, we're gonna take a look on how to style properly uh, all this section and how to uh, print the icons and how to generate include the proper javascript file to use the pre-built uh, media uploader wordpress to upload a custom image for our user so thank you again for checking this video as usual if you enjoyed please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and as usual if you totally don't care if you don't give a shit you can totally it's totally fine you can keep going and keep following my tutorial without subscribing i'm i'm t totally good like just give me your views that's what i want no i'm joking anyway if you really really like what i'm doing please like take a couple of minutes to check the support me page in my website and take a look and learn how you can support me and my channel and help me to create better content better video and better awesome wordpress tutorial and maybe other arguments in the future i could do all other sorts of things i'm a man of infinite resources anyway thank you again for checking this video and until next lesson as usual happy coding